Welcome to this Arnold Colourford Knitwear tutorial. I'm going to show you how to work garter stitch helically. When you work garter stitch in the round normally, you work one spiral of stitches and in your first round you'd work knit and then the second round you'd work purl and you'd alternate between them. At the change in the round, you get a point where a knit stitch sits next to a purl stitch and it creates this jog or seam line which might not be desirable in your project. When you work helically, you set up two spirals of stitches. You have one spiral using one ball of yarn where you knit all the time, and a second spiral using a second ball of yarn where you purl all of the time. And when you do that, you then get garter stitch that is completely without the jog or the seam line and just works smoothly all the way around. Helical garter stitch is just one of a number of stitch patterns that you can work helically. If you'd like to find out more about them, do have a look at our ebook, Something New to Learn About Helical Knitting, over on our website, acknitwear.co.uk. I've got a small sample of knitting on my needles set up to knit in the round. And uh, with my first yarn, I've knitted almost a whole round. I'm just about to make it back to the start of the round marker. And I'm going to join in a second ball of yarn so that I can start working helically. And I join in my new yarn by holding the yarn alternately over and under the working yarn. I do that for a few stitches so that it's properly anchored in place, just makes everything a bit easier. So holding it up. Oops. So this is my old yarn on the small ball and it's knitted a whole round and I've now joined in my new yarn and my new yarn is going to be used to purl. So the old yarn will always knit and the new yarn will always purl. So I bring the yarn to the front ready to purl and then I'm going to purl around until I come to the last three stitches of the round. So all I've done is join in the yarn and then I'm purling over the knits. So we're coming towards the end of the round and the knit yarn is attached to the last stitch in the round and we're going to work until we've got three knit stitches remaining. So I'm going to purl three more. So you can see the first garter ridge is forming there. And we're now going to slip these three stitches purlwise to the right needle. Now people sometimes find that a bit confusing because slip stitches are used in knitting to kind of draw up or lengthen a stitch across two rows. Um, in this case, we're not doing it in order to carry a stitch up. We're doing it just to return to the working yarn for the knit round. So we're slipping stitches as a way of moving them rather than a way of working them. So now that I've picked up my knit yarn, I'm going to knit around until I've just got three of the purl stitches remaining. And you'll be able to see that where I knit that first stitch, it's sitting directly next to the previous knit stitch. It's not sitting next to a purl stitch. So we've knitted round and here's our purl yarn attached to this stitch here. And we're going to leave those last three purled stitches unworked. So I'm going to knit right to that point. So 
So I'm going to drop my knit yarn at the rear of the work, slip those three stitches that have been purled to the right needle, slipping them purlwise so they don't twist. And then you'll see the last stitch on the right needle tip is attached to the purl yarn, which I left at the front of the work. And all we're going to do now is purl round until there are just three knit stitches remaining. As we come past the start of the round marker, you can see that the garter stitch ridge is completely unbroken and it will continue to be unbroken all the way round. So I'm now approaching the knit yarn again. You can always check where that is. And I want to work until I've got three stitches remaining in the knit yarn. So I'm going to purl the last four. And then again, I drop the purl yarn at the front, slip three stitches purl wise, and then pick up the knit yarn at the back, ready to carry on. And that's really all there is to it. You alternate between working the purl yarn, leaving it at the front of the work, and the knit yarn leaving it at the rear of the work. And you always work until you have just three stitches remaining in your previous yarn. We leave those three stitches so that when you do what I call the helical yarn change, which is when you change from one ball to the other, it means that the um, as you start to work with the new yarn, there's a needle in the previous stitch. If you worked right up until the last stitch in the new yarn, then when you started to work with the new yarn, there wouldn't be a needle in that stitch and it would be very easy to over tighten it. So where you change between the yarns will move as you work. But if you leave your start of the round marker in, you can always see how many rounds you've worked at the start of the round marker by counting the garter stitch ridges. Each garter stitch ridge is two rounds of knitting. And this is a sample of helically knitted garter stitch. You can see the beginning and the end of the spiral of garter ridge, but there's no jog for the beginning of the round because the purl stitches always sit next to purl stitches and the knit stitches always sit next to knit stitches. So you never get that point where a knit is next to a purl and you would have that, that seam that you get when you work garter stitch traditionally. I hope you can see that helical garter stitch is actually very straightforward and satisfying to work. If you'd like to find out more about any of the other stitch patterns that can be worked helically, then do have a look at our ebook, Something New to Learn About Helical Knitting, over on our website, acknitwear.co.uk. Thanks ever so much for watching.